helping you live healthy. According to the FDA, the average American eats more than 215 pounds of animal protein, beef, pork, and poultry every year. It's more than half a pound per American per day. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Tyson transformed the way it operates at its more than 100 production facilities across the country. Joining me now to talk about some of the safeguards in place is Hector Gonzalez, the Senior Vice President of Tyson Foods. Thanks for being here. So we Good heard... Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, we heard the stories about the problems for workers in the industry. Uh, what's it been like for your team members? Our team members have uh, experienced a lot of change, just like uh, everyone else that has um, been uh, subjected to this uh, global health pandemic. We are extremely proud of the work that our team members are doing to provide safe and healthy meals for Americans across the country uh, and continue to make uh, safety, the safety and health of our team members, our top priority. So the president basically issued an executive order saying the plant should reopen. How is that received by the workers? Because I know a lot of people, you know, just, you know, aren't ready to go back to work. And what safety measures were put in place? Yeah, I think the uh, the, the order that was issued, uh, we welcome the order and the clarification it provides in terms of the clear uh, lines of authority in terms of how uh, the different authorities will help ensure that the workplace is safe. Uh, but I'll tell you that our top priority is ensuring that our team members come to work uh, feeling safe and protected. And so despite any order, our top priority is ensuring the safety of our team members and their families and the communities where they live and work. So we will not hesitate to slow down an operation or even idle an operation to ensure the safe and healthy uh, uh, reaction of our people. And so uh, we have a number, a host of safeguards and guidelines that have been implemented that start with uh, symptom screening and uh, state of the art uh, symptom of uh, checks and uh, the issuance of personal protective equipment and other measures that have transformed our workplace. And then there's what's happening at the grocery store. Immediately, people start to panic. You know, first it was toilet paper. Then all of a sudden, at some of the grocery stores, people wiped out chicken. Is there any worry that there won't be enough food in the case to go around? We believe that there will be an ample food supply. And, and we're very proud of the heroic effort our team members continue to make through their commitment to provide one out of every five meals to families across America. And it, although uh, there has been a reduction in productivity as a, as a result of us ensuring the safety and health of our team members, a number of our plants have started to ramp back up. And we believe that uh, we will be able to do everything that we possibly can to ensure that we can meet the demand while ensuring that the workplace is the safest it can be. So if there's any shortage, at best, it might be temporary. So there's no need to go out and fill the grocery cart and stock your freezer to the brim. I think that what a number of consumers might experience is that they may not find the cuts that they prefer to purchase or perhaps the brands that they're used to putting in their cart. But I think this is a great opportunity for people to perhaps try something a little different. I don't think there'll be a shortage of food. I think our team members are committed to ensuring that families across America have the protein that they need on their dinner tables. And uh, it's, it's a changing time for all of us and we're committed to doing everything we can to take care of our consumers and our people first. See, there's a chance for, you know, to say to the kids, look, you gotta try something different. Hector, thanks very much, appreciate you.